Hello, my name is Paul C. Dwyer, Security GRC and Cybercrime Advisor. Today we're going to speak about DDoS and some mitigation strategies. First of all, what is a DDoS attack? Well, a denial of service attack, DOS attack, or a distributed denial of service attack, a DDoS attack, is an attempt to make a computer resource unavailable to its intended users. Let's look at a typical sort of DDoS attack scenario. First of all, you'll have a botnet herder. The botnet herder will have a command and control server. This command and control server is generally uh, communicated with uh, from the botnet herder via a number of proxy servers in order to disguise the identity of the botnet herder. Uh, you may have your website on the internet with a good solid connection through to all your users um, and, and everything is fine. However, with the botnet herder having access to a command and control server which links over to these infected machines known as a botnet, they will have access to be able to, to perform a number of different vector types of attacks against uh, your website with massive amounts of traffic, generally anywhere from 3 to 20 gigabit type attacks, which is more than enough to knock any website offline. Okay, let's look at some strategies to mitigate attacks. Well, generally these uh, types of mitigations tend to be reactive and very expensive. They range from redundant topologies to excessive bandwidth, load balancing, layer 7 switching, and even content delivery networks. But let's look at some of the more basic things we can do in order to mitigate the risk of a DDoS attack. Well, some of the things we can do, for example, are filtering. With filtering, you, you can identify different packet types. You, you can look for similarities between the attack packets, for example, size, destination port, and so on, and drop those packets and, and thus um, uh, mitigate the attack. Uh, there's also firewalls. Firewalls can be uh, discriminating use, can be used to block, for example, from UDP at, uh, flood attacks and so on like that. Uh, by configuring your routers not to forward to broadcast addresses, you can uh, protect yourself against the likes of a smurf attack. Um, some people opt with increasing bandwidth. This, again, is a very temporary solution as it's very easy for the attacker to adapt and, and for example, increase the size of their botnet that's attacking you with. Um, so it's only a very temporary solution to do that. Um, there's a lot of people that, that go along the lines of... Uh, uh, changing IP addresses. Um, I know a number of attacks have been going on for years based on people changing IP addresses. The reality is most attacks attack domain names as opposed to IP addresses, so this isn't the the the, uh, the silver bullet that people would like to uh, think that it is. Um, finally, one uh, attribution. I mean, that's bringing people uh, to the letter of the law and being able to prosecute them. Unfortunately, this is very rare, but it is a way to, to obviously stop the attacks. Um, what I would advise the main way of dealing uh, with the risk of DDoS attacks is to invest in a DDoS mitigation service. So how do you evaluate such a DDoS mitigation service? Well, let's look at some questions you can ask a DDoS mitigation service provider. Firstly, how many years have you been fighting DDoS attacks using your current strategy? Next, how many attacks do you mitigate? What is your typical time to mitigate attacks? How much bandwidth dedicated to mitigating attacks do you have? Describe how your network is globally distributed, where are your scrubbing centers, and what capabilities are in each. Which personnel in your organization are specifically devoted to fighting DDoS attacks? Explain the role of the person who answers the phone when you call in while under attack. Do they actually fight the attack or just log the request? Which tools and techniques do you employ to detect, analyze, and mitigate DDoS attacks? How does your service detect and mitigate application layer, layer 7 attacks? How does your service detect and mitigate randomized get flood attacks? Produce material evidence of your researching and fighting zero day attacks. Hopefully you'll find these questions a good way to evaluate the different service providers out there and you'll be able to compare answers between them and make your judgment call on, on, on the best service to use for your particular requirements. Okay, I hope you found this uh, video both uh, useful and informative, and uh, by all means, please stay in contact via the uh, uh, various forms here or visit uh, my website at paulcdwire.com. Thank you.